Hi, my name is Alex, and on this episode of Magic Missile Minis, I'm going to be walking you through how I made my Beholder for Dungeons & Dragons. So I start by cutting out a long piece of wire, making sure to cut out far more than I think I'm going to need. And then straighten that out and fold it in half with some pliers and start twisting it out. The reason that we twist out the wire is so that we can get a nice strong armature since we're going to be putting a lot of green stuff on this guy. And for those of you who don't know, a beholder is basically a big old floating eye with a bunch of little eyes and little eye stalks and a big old mouth. I then take my miniature and pose it on a 50 millimeter base. And as you can see, this is why we got a really long piece of wire, because the wire is acting as a counterbalance for the rest of the miniature on the base, since the miniature will end up being very heavy. I then go in with some hot glue to attach the wire armature to the base. Then you add a ball of tinfoil to the armature, and I found that this is just the best way to do larger miniatures without having to waste a ton of green stuff. I then add more strips of tinfoil as needed, and can then go on to add my first layer of green stuff. When you add your first layer, you don't want it to be too thin, because sometimes the tinfoil can kind of poke through the green stuff, and it makes it a lot more difficult to work with. I then add a little indentation for where I'm going to put the mouth, and I can start building up what will become the jaw of the beholder. At this point, the miniature was kind of turning into a bobblehead, so to give it a little bit more structure, I cut up some kebab skewers and hot glued them to the wire armature, adding another little piece here as almost like a little brace. I then go in and add more green stuff to where the eye is going to be and sculpt that into the model a little bit, and then start working on the eye stalks. So I do this by cutting out small pieces of wire and bending a little loop into the end of them where the eye is going to be sticking them into the miniature with some pliers. I then go in with some liquid green stuff and add that to all the wires. And this step isn't necessary, I was just kind of itching to use my liquid green stuff, and it's basically taking the place of hitting it with a file. I then decided to go in and add some horns. So another thing about beholders that some of you might not know is that they're all different, which makes them fun to sculpt because you can kind of do whatever you want. So I decided mine was going to have horns. So here I'm taking a rubber sculpting tool and blending the green stuff in with the green stuff that is already set, and then I take the same rubber tool to add an indentation for where the horn is kind of coming out of what's going to be some scales. I then take a metal tool and kind of shape it into like a triangle, and then go back with the rubber tool to smoothen everything else out. I then repeat the process around the rest of the miniature to kind of give him a mane of horns almost. I then move on to start sculpting the eyelid, adding a big old piece of green stuff around the top of where I added the eye before, and working it a little bit with a rubber tool, and sometimes just my fingers. I then add another smaller piece of green stuff for the bottom eyelid, and texture that to make it kind of look a little bit folded almost. I then work on the gums of the miniature, adding these kind of triangles of green stuff where the gums are going to be, and working that in with a rubber sculpting tool as well until it's a place where I like it. I then go in and do the rest of them and add a texture to them similar to what I did for the folds in the under eyelid. I then repeat the process for the lower gums as well. While that sets, I start working on the eye stalks, adding a bit of green stuff to all of the wires that I added before, and give it a bit of a texture. And it should look something like this without its teeth and without the eyes on the ends of the eye stalks. I then go in and add the teeth. Unfortunately, it's a little bit out of frame, but I add a small kind of triangle of green stuff and then work it with a rubber sculpting tool to make it almost slightly triangular. I then go to the eye stalks and add the eyes by adding a little ball of green stuff on top of them, and then I sculpt out the eyes, 
uh, kind of adding a little indentation and then pulling some more of the green stuff with the tool over the eye. Then repeat the process around the rest of the miniature. I then can start adding the scales to the beholder. And the way I do this is by adding a little piece of green stuff and shaping out the scales with a rubber sculpting tool. And then I go around the entire miniature doing this. And then I also add the tongue of the beholder. And once that's done, I can start working on the base. And so what I'm using as a basing material here is a mixture of Mod Podge and baking soda. It's a good kind of homebrew basing material that dries into a good texture for dirt, actually. But on this miniature, I kind of want a stone texture. So I add a bit of cork to the flat areas while the Mod Podge is still wet and go over that with another layer of just straight up Mod Podge. I then am going to turn this thing that's holding the miniature up into a stalagmite. And I'm doing this by texturing it with some hot glue, adding kind of rings around it, and then pulling the hot glue down to kind of make it that kind of drippy mineral effect that's on most stalagmites. I then add a couple smaller stalagmites using tin foil as a base and texturing that the same way that I textured the bigger stalagmite with more hot glue. And with that, the miniature sculpt itself is done. And um, I really, again, I love the basing part. And especially when you have different colors going on, it really accents all the details, as you can see here. You can actually kind of see how the stone texture and the stalagmites actually look like something and not just a big old pile of hot glue. And with the miniature primed, I can start painting it. For the scales, I added this cobalt blue color as kind of the base tone for the beholder. And for the gums, I add this reddish flesh tone. I then do a little bit of dry brushing on the scales with a slightly more intense blue. In the end, I changed this because I didn't like the way it looked, but we can get to that later. After that, I start adding the eye color, which is this kind of yellowish off-white. And I do a bunch of that into the big eye and I also hit the smaller eyes with that. Unfortunately, I lost the footage from when I painted the teeth and horns, but I hit those with a slightly different off-white color. I then start working on the irises for all the eyes. I started with a brown color, and for the bigger one, I tried to give it a kind of cool-ish shape. And then I just added a little slit into all the smaller guys. I then go in with a black in the middle of the eye, again doing the same for all the smaller ones, but then realized that the way I had done it, I had made the eye too small, so I went back with the same brown color and made it a little bit bigger. I then add another dry brush of a kind of mid-tone brown, which I also change lighter. I then hit the base of the miniature with like a mid-tone gray for the stone. I then go in and add a wash. So this wash is someone that I actually am kind of testing a little bit. I had just mixed it up and I don't really like how it turned out for the main body of the beholder, but it looked fine for the stalagmites and the base. I then go onto the base with a white dry brush to kind of bring out the stone texture. And then I add a gloss varnish to the eyes and the mouth. I then go in with my final dry brush, uh, going with a nice light blue to kind of make up for the darkness of the wash that I used. And once I've hit the entire miniature with that, I get a wet paint to make the highlight on the miniature, just wiping off any excess with my finger. And with that, the miniature is finished. This project was really fun to work on. Um, I really liked some of the details that I had to do, especially like the mouth area. I think that turned out really well. And the stalagmites amount of hot glue, I think was really cool. I had never done that before. And I think they turned out very well for a first try. Also, it's just kind of cool to do a larger miniature. I don't do a lot of big miniatures. Most of them are just the standard uh, 28 millimeter size. Um, the only one I've done before is this guy, and I did him 
quite a while ago. So going back to larger miniatures is just kind of fun because it's a different challenge. Thank you so much for watching that video. If you enjoyed, please leave a like. It really helps make sure that these videos get suggested to more people. If you want to see more, then you can subscribe and hit the bell to get notified whenever I release a video. From now on, I'm going to try to be releasing videos every single Wednesday. Again, thank you so much for watching this video, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.